Struts, the final frontier. Hi, we are team 13662 from Montgomery Blair High School in Silver Spring, Maryland. The overarching task of the 2020 M3 challenge, Keep on Trucking, was to model the integration of electric semi-trucks into the United States fleet of diesel-powered trucks, which make up a large proportion of the country's transportation infrastructure. The first problem asked us to predict what percentage of semis will be electric in 5, 10, and 20 years. In the second part, we created a mathematical model that determines how many charging stations are needed along certain trucking corridors, as well as how many chargers are necessary at each station. In the third and final part of the problem, we consider the economic and environmental effects of switching to electric powered semi-trucks along the five routes. We then rank the routes in order of how soon they should be targeted for transitioning to electric trucking. Sean will now delve into our approach for problem one. The first problem asked us to model the changing percentage of electric semi-trucks among a company's fleet as they transition from diesel to electric. We approached this model from the perspective of a company with a goal in mind to maximize profits and minimize costs. Therefore, we lay down two key assumptions. The first, that a company will avoid buying more trucks unless necessary, as that will incur extra costs. And second, that if a truck needs buying, they will buy only electric trucks as they are more cost effective than diesel ones. This assumption implies that the total number of trucks on the road doesn't actually change, which allows us to write this differential equation. Since a fleet is made up of diesel and electric trucks, we can rewrite this differential equation in terms of those two variables. However, Jesse will now explain why we chose to run a simulation instead of solving this equation analytically or approximately. Our core principle is that when the switch is made, since companies won't want to waste any trucks already owned, they will still only make new truck purchases that they would already be making, but they'll now just buy electric instead. If a truck needed to be replaced, it would be replaced with a new electric truck, but not until then would the purchase be made. Now the problem reduces down to determining the proportion of the fleet that is electric as diesel trucks are gradually taken out of commission and replaced with new electric ones. This problem is starting to sound similar to one that most encounter in an intro to calculus course where there's a tank filled with a mixture. Some concentrate is being added and the homogeneous mixture is simultaneously drained out. The question asks what the concentration is at any given time. The key that allows this problem to be solved with methods of single variable calculus is that the liquid leaving is of the same concentration as the mixture as a whole. The problem here is that in order to take a similar approach where we only need to keep track of the composition of the fleet, we would need to be able to determine how many of each type of truck leave the fleet at any given time based on only the fleet composition. Keep in mind that the number of each type in operation is changing, each type gets worn out at a different rate, and trucks may change jobs at some point during their lifespan. This was a rather troubling point for us, so we chose instead to simulate the problem down on the level of individual trucks. Going back to our equation, D and E only change when a diesel truck in the fleet breaks down and is replaced with an electric truck. Therefore, we would like to find the lifespan of a diesel truck to see how often it gets replaced. Just like how a car's lifespan is measured in mileage, we choose to measure a truck's lifespan in mileage as well. Given the proportion of a certain type of truck within a fleet, and its annual mileage, along with the average lifespan of a diesel truck, we can construct an equation to solve for the average lifespan of a diesel truck in miles. The summary sheet provided also introduces us to what we call phasing, where older trucks are gradually reassigned to shorter routes to preserve their lifespan. We therefore incorporate this into our formula as well. The necessary research has not yet been performed to allow us to do these calculations for electric trucks, so we decided to go with the largest currently experimentally viable number we could find, which was 1 million miles. Finally, we recognized that a truck could be spontaneously put out of commission for any number of reasons, so we introduce a probability that each truck breaks down every year as a function of its mileage. We set up our fleet according to the provided summary sheet with 5% short haul, 45% regional haul, and 50% long haul. If the change to electric trucks were to happen now, the trucks in the current fleet would have varying mileages. After a year, each type of truck, because of their different routes, travels a different amount. As calculated above, we assume that, for safety, trucks are phased out when they reach a given mileage differing depending on their type. 
we also know that there's a chance that a truck will spontaneously break down or be deemed unsafe, and that chance increases the more miles a truck has. After removing trucks, the composition of the fleet will no longer match the needs of the company. To restore the proportion, we use a method similar to the one that companies already use, where trucks of one type are repurposed for a shorter type. Since shorter types are less demanding, we repurpose the trucks with the most mileage in an attempt to keep them in operation for as long as possible. Regional haul trucks will be assigned to short haul until we meet the 5% requirement. We do the same with the regional haul, reassigning long haul trucks until we meet the 45% requirement. Then, to complete the fleet, we buy new electric trucks which go into long haul routes. This makes the most sense since long haul routes require the most reliability. Eventually, the entire fleet will become electric. The second problem asked us to create a model to determine the number of chargers required at stations along certain trucking corridors. First, we decided to place charging stations every 50 miles along each corridor so that truckers would have the opportunity to recharge about once an hour. Our challenge was then to determine how many chargers we needed to place at each station. To answer this, we developed what we called a need function to determine the demand for chargers along a corridor. Ambrose will explain the motivation and justification for this function. The purpose of our need function is to figure out what truckers would do if they could recharge wherever they wanted. This means that we assume truckers are allowed to recharge along any mile of the highway, instead of only at stations 50 miles apart. In this ideal scenario, truckers would simply keep driving until their battery hits 0%. They would then recharge wherever they happen to be, and then continue driving. If we have a way to simulate this trucking behavior and keep track of where trucks end up recharging in this ideal scenario, we can develop a continuous need function which represents how many trucks run out of electricity along every point of the highway. This will let us determine the number of chargers to place at each station. Thanks, Ambrose. To actually compute this need function, we use data that M3 provided on the annual average daily truck traffic along every mile of the highway. If you think of the AADTT data as a function in terms of distance from the start of the corridor, taking a derivative tells you the average number of trucks that enter or exit the highway along a given mile. This information allowed us to simulate the battery levels of trucks along the corridor. We started by initializing a list representing a group of trucks that have batteries uniformly distributed between 12.5% and 100% at the top of the corridor. We then followed and recorded the composition of the trucks as they traveled down the corridor. At each mile marker, we decreased the battery levels of all the trucks in our list to account for the electricity required to drive the past mile. Any truck that hit 0% battery was completely recharged to the 100%. We recorded the number of trucks that had to recharge along that mile in our need function. Finally, we recounted for the trucks entering and leaving the corridor. Whenever the derivative of the AADTT function was positive along that mile, that meant trucks were entering, so we added the appropriate number of trucks to the list, with batteries uniformly distributed from 12.5% to 100%. Whenever the derivative was negative, trucks were leaving, so we removed a random selection of trucks from our list. Once our simulation reached the last mile of the corridor, we were left with our need function. Once we had our need function, our new challenge was to use it to determine how many chargers were necessary at each station. Since we had already decided to evenly space stations every 50 miles, this was actually pretty straightforward. In general, a station located at mile marker X would be visited by trucks that would run out of battery in the next 50 miles. We can write this as an integral from X to X plus 50 of the need function dt. At this point, it is important to take a step back and check if our model is outputting reasonable answers. When we plugged in data from all six corridors, the typical station in our model required around 600 chargers. Some stations had up to 1,300 chargers. While at a first glance these figures seem too high, when you take into account the fact that trucks take 9 hours to recharge, 600 chargers seems more reasonable. A traditional gas station may only have 20 pumps, but that's because filling up a tank is around 30 times faster than charging a truck battery. It's clear that if the trucking industry wants to go electric, they're going to need to heavily invest in charging infrastructure around the country. The third problem asks us to rank a given set of five trucking corridors for development. In our model, we consider the economic and environmental impacts of developing each corridor, convert these factors to standardized indices, and finally use them to create our ranking.
We base the economic component of our model on the daily difference in refueling costs when we transition from diesel gasoline trucks to electric trucks. To calculate this, we sum up the refueling costs needed along the entire corridor. This is reminiscent of the need functions we used in problem 2. Let's calculate the refueling costs for electric trucks along the corridor. We first take the cost per kilowatt hour of electricity, E. We multiply this by the average electric capacity of a truck, C sub E. This gives us the total cost of refueling one truck. Now, we just need to figure out the number of trucks along the corridor which need refueling. This is precisely what the need function N of X is for. Since the need function gives the number of trucks per day that need to recharge at a certain point along the corridor, integrating along the entire corridor gives us the number of trucks that need to charge along the corridor. Multiplying all these factors together gives us the dollars spent per day on recharging along the corridor. We call this big E. Doing the same with diesel gasoline trucks, we can compute the dollars spent per day on refueling diesel gasoline trucks along the corridor. We call this big G. Finally, we can find the cost reduction by transitioning to electric trucks delta F by computing big G minus big E. To start, we had to somehow quantify the impact on the environment. The most obvious way to do this was to relate environmental factors to money. Trucks pollute the environment, and we already know that the consequences of climate change cost businesses and individuals a great deal of money through, for example, costs associated with more extreme weather. It turns out that there is an existing measure called the social cost of carbon, which measures this economic harm as a dollar value representing the total damages from emitting one ton of carbon dioxide. With this metric, all we need to do is determine the emissions of each corridor. It is industry standard to calculate emissions based on the total distance traveled. To get the total distance traveled by all trucks in the corridor, we integrate the truck density function along the entire length of the corridor. The other way we were able to quantify environmental impact involved the Air Quality Index, or AQI. Our aim was to determine how much the AQI of each corridor would change after eliminating diesel trucks, by obtaining both a baseline for AQI as well as how much trucks contribute to that value. The key is that AQI can be expressed equivalently in terms of concentrations of different pollutants. We chose to use carbon monoxide since it was the leading emission of trucks that was one of the AQI equivalent pollutants. To figure out the carbon monoxide emissions, we used a similar approach as before, integrating the truck density and scaling appropriately. We then subtract out these emissions to see what the carbon monoxide concentration would be if all the diesel trucks were replaced with electric trucks, and then convert that to an equivalent AQI. In part one of the M3 problem, we modeled the integration of electric semis into companies' current fleets as their diesel trucks age and go out of use. We created a pipeline for semi-trucks as they age. Electric trucks replace defunct long-haul trucks, older long-haul trucks replace defunct regional haul trucks, and older regional haul trucks replace defunct short-haul trucks. After running a simulation on a fleet of 1.7 million semi-trucks with random initial mileages, we found that 58.41% of semi-truck fleets will be electric in 5 years, 91.95% in 10 years, and 99.86% in 20 years. We then modeled the construction of charging infrastructure required by a transition into electric trucking, while also maintaining the current levels of long haul traffic. We created a need function representing the number of semis that will need to recharge at every mile along a trucking corridor. Our model found that charging stations should be located every 50 miles and should have an average of 600 chargers at each station, although this number can go up to 1300. Finally, we ranked the five corridors provided by the problem statement in the order of when they should be targeted for development into electric trucking routes. After considering both environmental and economic effects, we recommend that the first route to be developed should be the one from New Orleans, Louisiana to San Antonio, Texas. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching.